Hi, I'm Jen. Welcome to The Sewing Report. This channel is all about sewing crafts and DIY projects. And in this episode, we're going to be focusing on twin needles and how to use them. Now, if you've never used a twin needle before, don't be scared. They're pretty simple to use and they work generally the same on most sewing machines. So for this demonstration, I'm going to be using the Everson Sparrow 25, a machine I've been using for several years and very much enjoy. Now, my first experience using twin needles was several years ago. I believe it was on my brother SC400. It was a total disaster. So that's why I wanted to make this video is to help you if you're trying to attempt this for the first time. Now, there are so many different types of twin needles. There are different widths, there are different types, like there are some universal needles for most fabrics. There are ballpoint or stretch twin needles for stretchy or knit fabrics. And the reason most sewists use a twin needle is to try to replicate the same type of look that a cover stitch machine gives. In the past, I've done a few cover stitch machine videos on the Janome 1000 CPX, which was a loaner from Pink Castle Fabrics. It was great to work with, but I know not everybody could afford it. Twin needles are a lot cheaper than a cover stitch machine, so stay tuned if you want to learn how to use them. Twin needles are commonly used to hem knit garments like sleeves or the waist of a t-shirt, and they give you that store-bought, more professional look that a lot of seamstresses love. So if you want to use a twin needle, it will give you that same row of double stitching, but on the back it looks a little bit different than a cover stitch machine. And I'm going to show you the difference here. On the back of a cover stitch machine stitch, you see that little intricate network of threads. On the back of a twin needle stitch, you'll see little rows of stitches and a zigzag attaching and connecting those, which is the bobbin thread. So when I was looking around for twin needles, it can be a little tricky to find the exact needle you're looking for. It can be a little bit mind boggling when you see all of the different types of twin needles there are. So just make sure when you're shopping around, you get exactly what you're looking for because it can be real easy to kind of mix them up or accidentally purchase the wrong ones. I'm gonna be practicing on some interlock knit fabric. It's a little bit of a sturdy knit, so I thought that would be good practice. And I just thought I would try a couple different methods. When I was shooting my cover stitch videos, I did notice it made a big difference when I at least folded over the hem already to a predetermined amount, usually like half an inch or one inch, and then pressed it in place. If it was more of a cotton-based fabric, I could sometimes get away with using Elmer's washable school glue to help keep that in place so it didn't shift around. But I heard good things about using Wonder Tape, so I thought I would give that a try on one side of the fabric. So I made this little test sample, and on one side, I just folded it over and pressed, but on the other side, I put Wonder Tape right on the edge of the hem just to see if it would make a difference, and it certainly did. So let's talk about inserting your twin needle. You just need to remove the needle that you already have in your sewing machine, and then insert the twin needle with the flat side to the back, at least on my sewing machine, and then insert it like you normally would. When it comes to threading, you can just use your bobbin as you normally would. A lot of sewing machines come with an extra spool pin, so I installed mine at the top. You can also actually use the bobbin holder on top and use your bobbin with the same matching thread if you don't wanna go through that. To thread, you first will thread your left thread as you normally would using your main spool of thread. And then when you do the second spool of thread, you just run it through the same guides and steps that you would normally, but the only difference is that when it came to that last little tiny guide right above the needle, I skipped that and then threaded my second thread into the right needle. So there are two needles, obviously, because it's called a twin needle. To make this a little easier to see, I used three very distinct thread colors, and I'll show you a guide here. Left needle is the purple thread, right needle is the red thread, and then the bobbin thread is green. So you can see which thread is which when I show you the finished sample. So I started out doing the side that I just used my clover hot hammer to fold over and press didn't do anything else, and you wanna make sure that the right side of the hem, the one that will be visible on the outside, is facing up in your sewing machine. And using my sewing machine's seam allowance lines, I eyeballed where I needed to line my fabric up so that the stitching would just get to the end of my hem, right here. I don't think it particularly matters which foot you use on your sewing machine, and in hindsight, I should have just used my walking foot, but I decided to switch it out with the decorative stitch foot because it's clear so I could see easier, but I can also see with the walking foot. So I think next time I'm gonna try the walking foot. 
and see if that makes it any better just because I do really like using the walking foot because it feeds the layers of fabric so evenly. And normally I just keep the walking foot on my machine like 95% of the time. The only time I take it off is if I need something like a zipper foot or like a buttonhole foot, but pretty much it's the walking foot the majority of the time for most of my sewing projects. I just really prefer the walking foot and on my Janome 7700, it's got a built-in AccuFeed foot, which I really, really, really like a lot. If you're not familiar with Wonder Tape, it is a water-soluble double-sided stick tape. You put it down on whatever project you're working on, lift up the backing, and then you can stick something else to the other side. But the good thing about this is that it washes away when you launder the item. So even though when I ran my machine through with the Wonder Tape, it's a little bit stiff. I know once I wash that garment, it will be a little stretchier and, I'll have, and the fabric will have a little bit more give. So I noticed some very distinct differences between the side that I did not put the Wonder Tape on and the side that I did. So the side that I did not put the Wonder Tape on, I noticed that hem was a lot wavier and it didn't feed through as evenly. Plus I did notice there was a lot more tunneling on that side. The Wonder Tape certainly made a difference. So if you're hemming knits, I would highly recommend picking up some Wonder Tape. I also found some generic versions on Amazon as well, although I haven't tested those out. I think I might pick up some though because they were quite a bit less expensive than the actual Wonder Tape and I'm gonna see if, if they hold up to the brand name Wonder Tape. It may, it may not. Sometimes I have hit or miss luck with those items on Amazon, you just never know but I definitely saw a huge improvement with the Wonder Tape side. I did get a few skipped stitches. I don't know if there's anything I could have done better, but I did kind of notice that the skipped stitches were when I would kind of stop or hesitate in the stitching and maybe I should have just let it go through the whole way without stopping. Maybe that would have helped. If you have any tips for skipped stitches while using a twin needle, feel free to share those in the comments below so we can all benefit from your knowledge because I'm definitely interested as well. But you can see the three different colors of, of thread on the back and it just forms a little bit of a network of stitches but not as intense as a cover stitch machine. So overall, I was pretty pleased with the results and I have used both a cover stitch machine and a twin needle. I think a twin needle is a really great budget friendly option if you're not in the market for a cover stitch machine. I did really like having that loaner though, I'll be honest with you, it was a lot of fun to use and I, I could see some applications for it. I don't make a ton of clothes and I also don't really work with knits a whole lot. So I think for now a twin needle may serve my needs and, and I'll be good to go. But I'm definitely gonna keep experimenting with the twin needle. I did pick up both a stretch and universal twin needle. So the universal I'm gonna use on woven fabrics like quilting cotton or something like linen. And the stretch needles I'm going to use on my stretchy or knit fabrics, of course. And just a reminder, they come in all different types. I chose a width of four because I do like a wider set, a double row of stitches. You may want them narrow, but that's just kind of what I prefer. In fact, I would really like to try a size six or if they come in larger sizes, just because I do like to have them wider apart. But hopefully this video, you found it helpful if you're trying to use a twin needle for the first time. And again, feel free to share any tips you have with our community right here in the comments. I know I would love to see what you have to say if you have a lot of experience using twin needles because I certainly don't. But like any new sewing technique you're trying, of course it will take a little bit of time and trial and error to improve and get better and really feel like you've mastered this skill. So hopefully you enjoyed this video about twin needles and if you are interested in seeing what a cover stitch machine is all about, I've got quite a few videos on the Janome 1000 CPX and I would encourage you to check those out as well. I'm Jennifer with The Sewing Report. I'll see you guys next time.